this morning? Oh, Gabe's already standing up. Well, everyone's standing up and ready. Well, that's good because our first one is one which uh, is going to get you going pretty early on. So if you're still waking up, this could be a good chance to wake up during this song. Uh, thanks, Nick. That's enough of an intro, I think. Beautiful. In fact, really, it starts off at the place where worship really starts, which is fixing our eyes on God and laying ourselves down. That's where we are this morning. So that's how we're going to gather up, be gathered today. So welcome along this morning if you're new to us. With this heart open wide from the depths, from the heights, I will bring. A sacrifice with these hands lifted high, hear my song, hear my cry. I will bring a sacrifice. I will bring a
We thank you that you have uh, seen in your beautiful love and your grace to draw near to us, Lord, in Jesus Christ. You are the creator of all. You are the beginning and the end. Everything starts and finishes with you. So, Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for all your desires and plans for us, for this world, Lord, are for good. 
And I pray, Lord, even as we gather today, this would be a rich morning of encouragement. Uh, Lord, that the things of the week and the things of our lives, Lord, might find their order as we gather today. There might be some things that uh, we would love to hear from you this morning. But Lord, even perhaps more wonderfully, there are things that we will hear that we did not know we needed to. And that is your grace, Lord Jesus. That you love us. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As you're sitting down, just do that little awkward look around and go, oh yeah, I'm not on my own. That's nice. And you can greet someone. You can just nod or high five. Slightly awkward, but still lovely. Henry. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see you. Welcome. Uh, welcome. If this is where you usually come on a Sunday morning, it's great to have you back again. If you're visiting with us, uh, we want to welcome you this morning as well. Uh, it's always great to see new faces, and we would love to know that you're here, so please feel free to hang around. Uh, again, it might be that Pete talked about awkwardness. It might be that just stay a little bit longer and let someone come to you and say good day and try and be friendly. Uh, uh, if you are visiting with us this morning, um, hopefully you got a card that looks a little bit something like that. If you didn't get one of those, feel free to grab one. They're in the foyer somewhere. Uh, and uh, the QR code will open up a world of everything Playford Uniting Church, and you'll be able to uh, see what's going on. Uh, you'll also be able to get onto the email list uh, if that's something that you want. Uh, who this week got an email from me dated November? Fantastic. I have no idea. I, ha I didn't get one. So, and I did not intentionally, you'll forward, I, I got mine back in November, so uh, yeah, I didn't actually send out an email, um, go back in your history, check if you got the one back on the 19th of November, it may have just been floating in the World Wide Web for six months, I don't know. Anyway, if you want to get on the slightly delayed email list, QR code and uh, give us your details, we'd love to... Uh, to know that you're here, we'd love to uh, welcome you to part of the Playford family. Uh, and if you're online, welcome and hello, and I hope you're enjoying your morning wherever you might be. Uh, it's school holidays, so maybe there's some people away on school holidays watching from their seaside shack or something. Uh, who's on holidays? Excellent. Wow. Who likes holidays? School holidays, I mean. No, some of them put their hands down after. School holiday, excellent. I used to love school holidays, but after about three days, when I was a kid, after about three days, I was like, bored, I've got to go back to school and see my friends. So, I don't know. Hey, uh, school holidays, not only school holidays, but a couple of weeks ago, uh, we had a holiday, which was called, yeah, you haven't forgotten, Easter. Uh, and a number of people went on Easter camp. Who's been on an Easter camp ever before? Quite a few, yeah. Well, a few went away on Easter camp. Josh went away on Easter camp as a leader, I believe. Come on up. Uh, I didn't get your microphone, sorry. Is this one okay? Yep, just pick up that one. And uh, uh, we thought maybe a little bit of an update from Easter camp, how it went and all that kind of stuff. And to do that, uh, anyone who went on Easter camp, if you're here with Josh, if you went to the same Easter camp as Josh did, not just camping in general over Easter. Uh, do you want to come up the front? I saw Phoebe. Is Phoebe still here? She's shy, but she's coming. Uh, and that might be all that's here. Anyone else that went on Easter camp? Awesome. So, Phoebe, Josh is just going to interview you quickly. I'll give you this mic and you can pass it back to me. Well, we know that your name's Phoebe, so that's, yeah. that's a good start. Phoebe, what did you do over Easter? Ate chocolate. Ate chocolate? Yeah. Where did you eat chocolate? At Cornerstone College. At Cornerstone What were you doing at Cornerstone College? Were you visiting or...? No, on Easter camp. On Easter camp. Oh, right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, what was your favourite thing about Easter camp? Um, the messy games and the mosh pit. Messy games and the mosh pit. Yeah. Um, how did, what was the best thing about, like, how dangerous was the mosh pit? Just Very dangerous. Very dangerous. What is a mosh pit, actually? That's a, that's a good question, Phoebe. What's a mosh pit? A bunch of teenagers jumping and 
falling on each other and picking each other up and screaming. All in the act of worship. Just, just to yeah. clear that up. It's not, it's not just people jumping up and down on the spot for no reason. Uh, yeah, well, it effectively was yesterday. Um, uh, what else did you enjoy about camp? So you said, what was... So do you want to explain a bit about messy games, just from what you can messy remember? Messy games? Um, basically, they get, like, custard and eggs and a bunch of other food things, and you throw them at each other and stick your feet in them and, yeah. Yeah, that was messy games. And they were messy, I can confirm. They were pretty messy. Yeah. Um, what did you learn about God on camp? Um, a lot about grace and w ways to pray and stuff. Awesome. Now, one final question. Would you recommend going on Easter camp? I must preface this by saying there is an age limit, so it's only for school people. As fun as camp sounds, it's only up to year 12. Phoebe, would you recommend going on Easter camp for those that Definitely. haven't been? Definitely. Awesome. I think that's my interview. <laughs> Thank you very much, Josh and Phoebe, very off the cuff there. Uh, uh, how many adults would like to go on Easter camp? All right, Pete, we need to arrange a Easter camp with messy games and a mosh pit for the adults. If we can do that for next year, that'd be really good. All right, uh, I do have a few announcements, uh, a few things coming up. Uh, actually, first what I will say is uh, school holidays, so we don't have our kids program on the next couple of weeks probably, uh, but there are kids packs up the back. So any little ones that would like to do some colouring, some puzzles, some different things. And, and Nick told me there's even old Christmas ones there. So if you really like Christmas colouring and stuff, you can go and grab some of those too. So any little ones that want to go up the back, grab some stuff to do, uh, you're very welcome to do that. And I expect a 100-word report on what you're doing at the end. Excellent. All right, a couple of announcements. Mother's Day is only four weeks away. Only four weeks away. Uh, and uh, we announced this last week, but we have a little bit of a fundraiser. Uh, it's going towards the wonderful festival, isn't it? That's all right. So the funds raised are going towards our wonderful festival at the end of the year. Uh, this is a Mother's Day one. So uh, Angela has a table set up in the foyer uh, and... The general gist of it is this, you buy an object, all right, it might be a mug, a fancy glass thing, a, something with a flat surface, uh, and you, you buy that yourself, you take that to Angela, uh, and you talk to her about what kind of, I think they're vinyl stickers, is that right, they're kind of vinyl stickers, uh, that can be designed and cut out for you, uh, and she will put them on your object and then you have a personalised gift for Mother's Day. So, $5, you, you buy the object, uh, you give Angela $5, uh, and she will arrange that for you. So, see her after the service. Great little fundraiser, great little idea as a gift for mum, if, uh, if your mum's that hard to buy for a person. Uh, so, see Angela after it. Just raise your hand, Angela, so everyone sees Angela over there. Excellent. Uh, we have another fundraiser, uh, th but this is not for... Uh, necessarily for raising funds for Playford United Church or anything for us. Uh, it's raising funds for a group called Cos We Care. Uh, we had Fiona up the front last week telling us about that. Uh, the concert is Saturday 25th of May. So you got to... What's that? About six weeks, I reckon. About six weeks. It's an afternoon concert. It's being held here. Uh, and Fiona is after singers, musicians, bands, those sorts of performers... Uh, to, to help put on a show and all the funds raised will go to this group Cos We Care and you can Google Cos We Care and find out all about what they do. Uh, they do some really wonderful stuff locally as well. Uh, so is Fiona here? Yes, Fiona's up the back on that side so make sure you go see Fiona uh, afterwards to, to get involved in that. Uh, a couple of other things, just some needs that have cropped up amongst our community uh, and our extended community. Um, uh, a few weeks ago, we did a, a deodorant drive. Uh, Nick, that was for Elizabeth... Elizabeth North? Elizabeth North. Uh, primary school, I think. Yes, and uh, they were overwhelmed and th very thankful for all the deodorant that was uh, donated towards that. Uh, so much so that we had a request from another group, Playford International College, would love also the same sort of thing. Uh, their stipulation is roll-ons only. So the fundraising is going to roll on. 
uh, and you can buy your roll-ons uh, and donate them. If you bring them to the office uh, during the week or next Sunday, we will pass them on. Uh, and also our uh, congregation that meets after us, Golgotha Uniting Church, they meet after us here on a Sunday. Uh, they've let us know of a couple of new families uh, basically landed straight, come from Africa uh, just very recently. Uh, and like any new arrivals, there's needs and things that they have to sort out and things that they have to get. Um, at this stage, we know they're needing things like crockery and bedding and, and all those, some of those basic things. Uh, and it struck us too that in this new digital age, the children actually need some of those electronic gadgets and things. So if you have any uh, ability or anything lying around that is in good condition uh, and you think they could use it, then uh, come and see Pete about that. I think that's all my announcements. What I'd like to do now is to stop and pray. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff going on in the world. Um, we... Uh, we don't take up an offering, but we have our offering box at the back, and uh, I know a lot of you give online. Uh, and, and the giving is, uh, you know, it's for our work uh, locally uh, amongst this community, uh, but also further abroad as well. Uh, and we want to keep in mind all that is going on in this world. Uh, we sung about the God who was, who is, and who is to come. Uh, and our hope is that Jesus is coming, that he is still to come again in his fullness, uh, and we know that true peace uh, and our hope is in that, in his coming. Uh, but there are people around the world who are suffering uh, and in need. We think of what's happened up in uh, Bondi yesterday. Uh, we think of uh, the Middle East where there's all sorts going on at the moment. So would you uh, pause with me for a moment and pray. Our Father, we come to you because you, we acknowledge you as the God of the universe, the God who holds all things together, uh, our creator, our king, the one that we can come to in times of trouble, the one that we can worship with joy and praise. Uh, and we come to you now, uh, we think of some things particularly that are going on in our world. Father, we think of what happened yesterday at Bondi and Father, our prayer uh, is for all those who are uh, connected in some way to that tragedy. Lord, we see the senselessness of it. Uh, we see the horror of it. And we realize that there are uh, people in pain and hurting and traumatized. People grieving. Uh, and so we pray for them. Lord, would you bring comfort to their lives? Would you bring hope in situations that seem hopeless? Uh, would you, uh, through the arms of other people, perhaps, would you surround them and comfort them and care for them? We lift them up to you. Uh, and Father, uh, we hear the, the latest things in the Middle East, uh, Iran and Israel and, and different things. We hear rumors of what might happen. Uh, Father, we pray for peace in the Middle East. Lord, we realize that true peace is only found through you. But we pray for the leaders. We pray for the governments. We pray that you would give them wisdom. Would you give them compassion? Would you give them a heart for other people? Lord, so often there are so many different agendas in situations like this. And we pray that you would give the leaders give them your heart for people Lord we pray for peace we pray for the civilians who are in a sense defenseless and at the whim of decision makers Lord we pray for safety Lord we commit our world to you uh, in so many different ways uh, this is a world that you created a world full of people that you love and so we ask that you would uh, intercede and step into situations and that we would see your peace. And Father, this morning we pray for peace even in our own lives. Uh, Lord, all of us going through different things, different uh, things have happened during the week, different thoughts on our mind, different things in our heart. Lord, we pray this morning that we would know your peace. Uh, your word says that peace that passes all understanding, a peace that we can't even understand that just comes over us. We pray for that even right now. 
And Lord, we commit ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen. And we have, uh, we have our scriptures, which uh, is the word of God, we believe. And then there are words that have been written by people of faith over the generations. And uh, this next hymn is uh, possibly one of the oldest hymns that we sing, probably. The music was written in 1905. That's why it sounds very melodic and very 20th century. But the lyrics themselves, hard to know, somewhere between the 6th century and the 10th century, somewhere in that 400-year period. It appeared written down as a handwritten poem in, in some writings in the 10th century. And it's a song which was written out of uh, Old Ireland. Now, when you think of Old Ireland, you might think of 1920s Ireland or something. But we're talking 400s Ireland, 600s Ireland. And it's a particular prayer which is seeking the protection of God. And there's some language in there which actually is almost unique to growing up in six, you know, in the 400s in, in Ireland, quite remarkably. The, the story of um, God being um, uh, like the chief, uh, the one who was ruling over uh, the people, um, be my battle shield and my delight. Some of that language was, was what was going on at the very time. And understand that God was their protector. And they wanted God to be literally their vision is what we're singing today. So would you like to stand and sing with a song that has carried many through many incredibly difficult times. It's a song which calls us back. So uh, enjoy. And be thou my vision, O Lord of my Oh, 
Father, we have declared your word in song this morning. You are the way maker. Lord, where we cannot see a way, you are the way. And Lord, when we have been let down, Lord, you are the promise of faithfulness. And Lord, when there are things that we do not have the capacity for, or things that don't seem to sit within our human understanding, you are the miracle worker. Where you, Lord, there is no darkness, only light. So, Father, for those of us gathered here this morning who have come looking for the way, who have come needing some kind of miracle, who have come, Lord, wanting a promise to be fulfilled, wanting to be able to trust someone and something, Lord, we see this morning you are in our midst. So, Lord, would you have your way in us by your Spirit? Lord, your very word of life to us. Father, we pray for Gabe as he is going to approach here soon, Lord, for the word that you've placed on his heart, a word about wisdom. Talk about, about wisdom, wisdom from, from uh, years and years ago. Lord, we're going to hear from Proverbs this morning and we look forward to that. Lord, that your word, your word is true. That your word is good, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. You are. when I walked in that one of the uh, art projects that we want the kids to do is they need to draw me preaching, which is why I wore this shirt because this is the level of detail that I expect. All right? I will be judging those after. So today we're going to talk about living differently means choosing wisely. And we're going to talk about Proverbs. And Proverbs was actually written in a sort of a parent-child parent -child format. Okay, okay, but that doesn't mean that you don't get to listen, young people. This isn't just for you. All right. So you'll, you'll hear my son, you'll hear those kind of things when you read Proverbs, but remember that we too as adults have a father as well. And he's God. So we can understand that whenever it's time to listen to someone who is wiser than us, that that is for everyone. Okay, so it's not just about you. All right. So, I'm going to ask you a quick question. You can shout it out. A little bit of interactive this morning. If I told you you could ask for anything you wanted and I would give it to you, what would it be? Peace? Peace? I'm going to ask the kids for a real answer. All right. So, no, I'm kidding. What would you ask for? Sleep. See, that's honest right there. If, if you were asked for what you wanted, wanted it might depend on what you're going on through in the moment. You're going to ask for sleep. You're going to ask for peace. I want more money. I remember, you know, in youth group, 
well-meaning youth pastor told me, you know, when we, when we pray for things, when we ask God for things, that, you know, God's not Santa Claus. Okay, he's not there to grant our wishes. But I want to say, all right, I feel a little bit ripped off after I was doing my study this week. Because before we talk about Proverbs, we need to talk about Solomon, King Solomon. He's the guy who pretty much is accredited with most of Paul's, and he has a bit of an origin story, right? An origin story about when he takes over. And he actually takes over as a young person. All right? He becomes king when he's quite young. And he gets asked this question by God. First Kings 3, I think that's my next slide. All right, the Lord appears to Solomon at night in a dream, and God said, ask for whatever you want, and he will give it to you. Wait a minute. That's exactly like Santa Claus. <laughs> Who are you kidding? All right. But his answer is not what we would expect of a young person. Let's be real. And, and so, so the question, question I need to ask you is, if, if you were asked, asked for whatever you wanted from God, would you choose wisdom? Because, because if I'm honest for myself, myself, that's not what I would ask. <laughs> I'm just being real. Would you ask God for wisdom? Would that be the one thing that you ask God to give you? Because that is exactly what Solomon says. As we read in 1 Kings, now, now, my Lord, you have made your servant king in the place of my father David. But I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here amongst the people you have chosen, a great people. Too, many, too numerous to count or to number, so give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? Wowzers. How crazy. Anything you want, I will give you. And Solomon chooses wisdom. Why? Why does he choose wisdom? Because I think, and the most important thing for us to remember as parents, the most important for things for us to remember about the people that we are interact with is that he sees his father, David. He sees that his father, David, followed the Lord, and he saw that the Lord blessed him when he did that. So we need to understand that wise people choose the right people. You, you have shown, shown kindness to your servant, my father, David, David because he was faithful to you, righteous and upright in heart. You, you have continued this great kindness, kindness to him and given him a son to sit on his throne for this very day. Wise people choose the right people to be influenced by. Solomon sees his father, David, and knows that it's God that made David's life blessed, that following all of God's commands, as his father David did, is what gave him success. Wise people choose the right people. We're to listen to the wise. We're to listen to those people who've been there, who've walked through it, we, we have, have much, much to learn from them. them. And, and Solomon, Solomon was young. We have much to learn from him. It doesn't doesn't necessarily, necessarily mean you're old or you're young. young. It means that you are wise. Because, because we know that we need to not only really listen to the wise, but we need to watch them. them. Okay? Wise, wise people must choose the right people because, because if we don't, don't Okay. We need to understand that our parents, that our mothers, that our fathers are there to help us. Now, I didn't always like to listen to my parents. I thought I knew more than they did. The truth is, is that they were wise. Someone I did happen to listen to a lot was my grandma. All right, you know, sometimes when people become grandparents, we think suddenly they get smarter again. I don't know why that is. 
But, but my grandma, grandma, you know, she, she had tells this story one time when I was about six years old, and she says that she was trying to, all my cousins lived elsewhere, right? So she had to pack up all the Christmas parcels, and she had to put them in a bigger box so she could send them off. All right? Now, I was pretty young. I was like seven years old. And she was getting really frustrated because she couldn't quite get them to fit in the one box, and it was really expensive, and she really wanted to send the one box. And I sat there, and I watched her. All right? And, and then, then I, I walked over, over and, and I just did this little, you know, thing, thing of like, shh, with my hand. <laughs> and, and I go, watch this. And I went, do, 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 and put, put the box down. down. Now, now she'd been, been doing, doing that for about seven or eight minutes. minutes. Now, now sure, that was smart of me. But, but wisdom is what kept me alive. <laughs> because my grandma said to me later on, I didn't know whether to kiss you or to kill you. Because, because you, you let, let me struggle, struggle with that for a long time. time. Wisdom. Grandma's, Grandma's wisdom, wisdom was always, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have to go around telling people how smart you are. They'll, they'll just know. <laughs> wisdom comes, comes from the next generation. generation. But, but if, if we, we don't choose the right people, people bad, bad things happen. happen. So, so for our next, next slide there. there. My, My son... If, if sinful, sinful men entice you, do, do not give in to them. If they say, come along with us, let us lie and wait for innocent blood. blood. Let us ambush harmless souls. Let us swallow them alive like the grave and whole and like those who go down to the pit. We will get all sorts of valuable things and fill our houses with plunder. Cast your lots with us. And we will share all the loot. My son, do not go along with them and do not set your foot on their paths. Now, now, yes, we're, we're not pirates, pirates. <laughs> we're, we're not, not robbers, robbers. But, but the, the message here is that, that we must be careful about who we listen to, who we watch, because there are people who will take us places that we should not go. That is not wise. It is not wise to be, to be influenced by things that actually bring destruction. There's, There's a term, term in our world, world now called being an influencer. It's actually, actually a really powerful word. word. And, and wisdom helps us discern who we should let influence us. Because it can sound really good, but it's leading us to destruction. Wise people choose the right, right place. For, For the Lord, Lord gives wisdom. From, from his, his mouth come, come knowledge and understanding. He, he has success in store for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk, whose, whose walk is blameless. blameless. He guards the course of the just and protects the way of the faithful ones. Wise people choose to be in the right place. Over and over and over again, almost every chapter of Proverbs starts like this. My son, bend your ear to the Lord's instruction. Listen to me. My wisdom comes from God. The right place to be is the place of listening. And when you think about it, listening needs to become a part of everything that you do. We all know what we're supposed to be doing. We should pray more. We should read the Bible more. We should, should worship more. But, but I argue that those things only work when we, we wisely choose the place of listening. listening. I, I need, need to pray to listen, listen not, not to talk. talk. It's, it's hard, hard for me, I'll, I'll be honest. honest. We, we need to read, read the Bible to listen. listen. We, we need, need to worship to listen. listen. We need, we need to, to worship, worship to, to listen to the things that God wants us to do and wants us to be and the way that he wants us to live. So wise people choose the right place, that place of listening. And look, just because I stand up here, I'm not going to say to you, yes, God speaks to me audibly all the time. It's very easy for me. It doesn't happen to me very often. And listening is hard for me because, yes, I pray and sometimes I've got a lot to say. I've got to to tell, tell God, God a lot of things. things. But, but I, I need to shift the balance. 
When, when I, I read, read, I read because I, I want you to give me something. Lord, give me a sentence to get me through the day. That's fine. Yep. But I need to listen. I sit here in worship and, oh, maybe that helps me calm and it's good and I feel and it prepares me. But I need to be listening. Listening to what God is trying to say to me. So I'll say to you there's no magic formula for it. I'll say to you that it's actually something that we can all do. And it's a prayer that God wants to answer because, look, God wants nothing more than to know you're listening. So just pray. God, help me to hear you in any way that I understand. And that's going to be different for you and for you and for you. Growing up, we had a close family friend who we did everything with. And uh, his name was Danny. And now he actually grew up in a Jewish family. He became a Christian later, but he loved to fish. And I mean, when I say he loved to fish, it's what he did with his spare time all the time. He smelled like fish all the time. All right, as soon as he got home from work, the first thing he did was put on fishy and smelly hoodies, fishy and smelly beanies, and big gum boots, and he used to go out and fish whenever he could. So, I mean, he was just, he loved fish, right? So, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't one of those people, people who had, you know, he was very practical, he didn't have time to sit there and contemplate, he wasn't part of that lifestyle. But, but he, he said, said to me once that he was really struggling with an interpersonal problem, problem and he couldn't quite work out what to do, and he kept praying and praying and praying and praying, and praying, and praying about it, and he couldn't figure it out. And, and then finally he realized that maybe, just maybe, he was doing a lot of talking and he wasn't listening. And so finally he stopped. And, and he, he said, said, Lord, please let me understand what it is I need to do. I am listening. And, and he did this on a boat while he was gotten and cleaning a fish. <laughs> and, and he had this really old, reliable fish knife. And he said, the instant I said those words and I went to put the, f put the knife to the fish, guess what happened? Instead, Instead of the, the knife, knife cutting the fish, the fish, the fish broke the knife. And, and as soon as that happened, he knew what to do. God will speak to you if you ask, and he will speak to you in a way that you understand if you simply ask. Wise people choose the right place to listen to God. Okay? Wise, Wise people, people choose the, the right path. path. Okay? okay. Look, Look, Solomon's, Solomon's life wasn't, wasn't perfect. perfect. He, he started out really well as a young person. He asked God for exactly the right things. things. And in, in that, that story, God, God actually says, says to him, because you asked for the right thing, I'm going to give you a bunch of other stuff as well. Because, because you didn't ask me for wealth, because you didn't ask me to vanquish your en enemies, because you didn't ask me to be powerful and have tons of things, I'm going to bless you as well anyway. But, but what that meant was is that Solomon had to understand that he still needed to choose the right path. And if, if is a good word in the Bible. <laughs> if it says if, it means God says, well, listen, yep, I'm here to bless you, but there's a response. So wise people choose the right path. If you walk in obedience to me and keep my decrees and commandments as your father did, you will have long life. You will be wise. Wise people choose the right path. Okay? So, Robert Frost... There's a famous poem by Robert Frost called The Road Less Traveled. The most famous line from it is the end. I took the road less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. But Robert Frost really stole that from Jesus. So we're going to steal it back. In Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14, Jesus says this. Enter the narrow gate. For wide is the great and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. We need to understand that there are so many things in this world that the world will tell you are good for you. It's, they aren't. That they're there to chase after, 
and they will give you happiness and fulfillment. They won't. The wisdom of this life is to live differently than the world does, to listen and not talk. And who do you listen to? Wise people live differently. See, so Simon was, was young, and by the time he writes Proverbs, he's old. And when he's admonishing his own son to listen to him, it's because he knows that he listened to his father. And I want you to listen to me. Okay? So wise people live differently. Solomon also experienced and enjoyed everything else that God gave him. That's why we have Ecclesiastes. So Ecclesiastes is a whole book of Solomon saying, yep, 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 I asked God for wisdom and I was wise, but God also gave me all this other stuff. And you know what I realized? It's all empty. I tried it. I had all of it. And in the end, Ecclesiastes can be summed up in this. Wisdom is supreme, therefore get it. Because it was the only thing that was good for me. Will you live differently? How will you live differently? My child. You. 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 Accept my words and store up my commands within you. Turn your ear to wisdom. Apply your heart to understanding. Indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and, and if you, you look, look for it and search for it like treasure, you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Nothing in this world is worth our efforts but bending our ears to the Lord's wisdom, hearing from God. So please, please, please hear me when I say, whatever God has called us to do, to read the Bible, to pray, to worship. It's, it's with an ear to listen to God and what He has for you. The world will notice because you will live differently. You can become wise. In the end of his life, that was all Solomon cared about that he lived a life that was wise. Everything else was meaningless. If you want to live differently, live for God's wisdom. Choose wisdom. It is the most precious thing that you can ever ask for. We pray these things in your name, Lord. And I pray that you would lift everyone in this place that you would give them a listening heart, that you would give them listening ears, Lord, that they would seek and search and cry out, Lord, that you would be their wisdom, you would be their vision, Lord God. Lord, we want to speak less and listen more because that is the way of wisdom. In your, in your name, amen. Thanks, Gabe. Searching after wisdom. We're going to finish with a final song, uh, which is really a prayer. And it is um, it's simply, uh, it's the heart's cry of, Lord, I want to build my life uh, upon you. No one else besides you, no one else opens my eyes in wonder. Would you like to stand with us as we pray together to close?
could ever see. of the moment, perhaps it's a, a week of stopping before you make that choice, asking God for wisdom and then listening. Pray that this week would be a week of wise choices in, in all things. Maybe it would start with staying around for a little while. We'd love to get to know you more. Uh, we'd love to shout you a coffee. Maybe have a chat with someone else who's, a wise, who's perhaps a little wiser than you about decisions that you might have to make this week over a cup of coffee. So stay with us, enjoy some time together, uh, and let's go forward into this week choosing wisely, choosing the wisdom of God. Amen? Amen. Amen.